And that's not too dark for me, is it? It's not. And we're live. No, you, you, we're looking good. Hello. Hi, um, everyone. So I am here with a little uh, Alamin. And I was um, here to ask him a little bit about his um, way of living um, as a breatharian, um, as a master in, in Qigong and meditation. So hello. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Israel. Um, so tell us a little bit about, about yourself, about, um, about the journey. Well, dealing with the breatharian journey, what first got me into really taking my health seriously was health problems. There was a time I used to be overweight and I really felt bad to be that at that age. So I decided to do something about it and I ran into a man who told me, well, first of all, just leave alone meat. So I left meat alone and I lost a whole lot of weight, really started feeling good, started exercising, and I really felt good about myself. So when I seen the magic of diet changes, I started to learn more about different types of foods to put into my body. So I went into live and raw foods. And that was another great journey that I loved. I started, uh, I got so much into it, I started um, actually teaching people how to go live and raw. So I uh, started to learn how to make pizzas without cooking them, breads without cooking them, it got really great. And you don't need much to do that either. So then, even though I'm feeling real good, I'm about 80% live and raw, this one young girl said to me one day, well, there's people who's breatharians. I said, what is that? They don't eat at all. I said, no way. <laughs> so immediately I started really searching for as much information as I can on the internet. And sure enough, there wasn't much at the time like it is today. But what I did find, I ran into uh, Jazz Muheen's book, dealing with the 21 day process, living on light, learned as much as I can. And as I learned much as I can, I looked at my own situation in life on what I had going on for myself. Was it possible for me to do a 21 day? But at the same time, I was in a situation in life, just got married, just had a kid, had a job where I really couldn't take much days off. But I really wanted to do this because I had a lot of zeal for uh, development and within myself, spiritual development. So at the same time during that season, mind you, before I came into breatharian, my uh, lifestyle was already holistic. From back when I was overweight, I done a whole lot of working on myself, learning more about meditation, learn, learning more about diet changes that I'm talking about. How long was this this path of between you living meat right. and, and to go to vegetarian? And that went about two years. Two years. Two years. And the thing about it, I was already, y'all might like this, with a Hebrew community where I was keeping the Sabbath faithfully uh, every week. Same day, no eating, no drinking. So that I got used to that cycle. Now, when I first started to fast once a week, I couldn't wait till the fast was over. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, I can't wait to look at my watch. <laughs> and as soon as it's over, you're just pigging out, trying to eat as much as you can. But you're proud of yourself. You at least uh, went 24 hours. Why? Why did you start um, fasting for 24 hours? Why? Well, basically it was due to spiritual reasons also. I wanted to learn more spiritually, and that's when I started to learn more about the Shabbat. And that's the day to do it on. So, of course, I stopped eating from sundown to sundown. I had that incorporated into my lifestyle. And the community I was with, they're actually here in Israel, uh, in Demona, um, they were also into veganism, so that's how I found them. You know, coming from the um, diet of eating anything of soul food, the African American diet, that's the diet I found, which was veganism. So I learned a whole lot going through that structure. So even that fasting once a week showed real good health benefits. So I can see the benefits and the power of a holistic lifestyle. So it's also a health issue mm -hmm. and a spiritual issue. Absolutely, which are combined once you get deeper into the game. Can, can you speak a little bit of both of them? How, how um, not eating mm -hmm. help you with your health and, and what's the benefit spiritual? Oh boy, this is great. <laughs> Where our minds is an extension of our bodies. Mm -hmm. 
And if you're painting and there's sickness and illness within the body, it's hard for you to pray, it's hard for you to meditate, it's hard for you to study. So it only makes sense to keep the uptake, upkeep of the physical vehicle so you can have more time doing these things. So health-wise, health and spirituality go hand in hand because the more you take care of your physical vehicle, the more you can pursue spiritual knowledge, spiritual endeavors. So this is why this is so combined. And when you're dealing with the creative forces that created us, we was created through the sexual water. Somebody has sex to make us that's dealing with the power of sexual energy. That's a creative force. And we will all agree who's in the spirituality that you're also dealing with the creative spiritual force that comes from the source. That's what we want. So it's one and the same. So not only dealing with the food aspect of it, also I was dealing with going into meditation, learning more about the kudalini energy, as some practices call it, but the sexual energy. How important it was to harness that energy, maintain it for your health. Just don't spin it any old type of way. And also your diet goes hand in hand with that because with a bad diet, it slows down your blood flow again. It weakens your health. It weakens your sexual energy. So all three of these go together now. Food goes together with it, spirituality goes together, and sex goes to together with it. When all of them are at their full potential, you're watching what you eat. You're watching what you put into your body. It strengthens your health. It, stre it keeps your sexual energy, what makes you happy. And then and you can use that sexual energy to really pursue higher level spiritual things, which is a great endeavor on this journey. Okay, that, that's amazing what you're saying. You're saying when you're not eating, mm -hmm. it's changing your sexual energy exactly and that how that helps you to be healthier absolutely how? because the center of our body there's an energy we call let's go with the physical part of it the cerebral spinal fluid that goes from the brain all the way down our spine up and down the more you keep this is the center of our body the more your body is in tune with its center that's what meditation is all about getting in a relaxed position the more you relax the body, the easier the energy flow. Mm -hmm. um, and it's bringing your body back to the center. Even when you're fasting, uh, people have more spiritual awakenings, uh, not spending that energy dealing with uh, eating physical foods. So all of this goes together with the package. But when you start taking it more, how should I say, more progressive or going longer periods without food, and keep in mind you got to prepare yourself for this. A lot of people find out about breatharianism, but I'm going to tell you what it's about. It's about dealing with energy. We're all working with energy, everybody. When you look at the spiritual practices like breath work, yoga, stretching, tai chi movement, we're doing these things naturally. This is naturally what you do. So the spiritual path is you're basically doing these things more with knowledge, more with cognitive thinking. Even sitting up straight, where your teacher used to say in school, sit up straight or you're going to get tired. That brings more energy to the body. So what you're doing, becoming a breatharian, you're becoming a more advanced energy worker. Okay, so, so you're saying everybody is, is a breatharian. Absolutely. And what you're teaching is to come back to the, your nature. Come back to, to your nature. own nature. Your three main treasures in life. Breath is number one. Okay. Then you got food. Then you got water. Now, breath, if you take that away, <laughs> you're going to die real soon. Mm -hmm. But food, you can last a period of time. And also without drinking, you can last a period of time in the standard knowledge of humans. Now, once you find out that you're an energy being and your body is actually, no matter who you are, coordinating with the atmosphere. Without us even thinking about it. It's on our pilot doing these things to keep us alive. And when you come into that knowledge and to start learning more about your biology and then with a lifestyle in tune with your biology, then these principles, these energies become more strengthened to give you health, longevity, and then you'll find out your chemical system dealing with your endocrine system deals with sleep and wake cycles, also deals with hunger, feeling hungry and not eating. So even meditation such as the microcosmic orbit where you focus in on your different energy channels, those right there you will find out that, man, my hunger is gone. It's not hunger after all. 
So even when times when your stomach used to growl, oh, I'm hungry, I need something to eat, that's just toxin moving. A human being was ignorant to the biology of their body, so they go fill it up with more with more toxicity. So even when you get on these levels and start going more extended times, extended times without eating, um, you will find out that nine times out of ten you're eating because of emotional issues, boredom. You're not hungry at all. You're just trying to do something to fill in the gaps, and this is what's destroying people. Notice that they got a big thing in the West called preventable diseases, which is an epidemic. Mm -hmm. And preventable means it could have been prevented. It didn't have to happen. So that right there is a clue that, wait a minute, people are, they're not starving whatsoever for not having food. You don't know how to eat. You're overeating, eating too much. Even in America, you know, that's my home country, hooray. <laughs> but there is an obesity problem. People don't know how to eat. And even like how I teach, I'm not teaching you not to eat at all. You don't have to go to those levels. Those are for the chosen few who really take their spiritual cultivation of energy work a little bit more seriously. Because a lot of people just say, oh, this is for me. And I can lay it down. And they run into all types of difficulties, losing too much weight. We're going to talk about that because you're going into it too fast. Give your body time to coordinate itself with the atmosphere because it already knows what to do. Okay, so how how do you know to for who it's fit? For who does it fit? Being a vegetarian or go to 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 teach it to 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 your teaching. Well, just for starters, for my teachings, I do teach on different levels within a group to when the information is for you, get it. Everybody I talk to is on different levels, so you always fit your com conversation to fit that type of person. So that's, breatharianism is for everybody. It is for everyone? Exactly. Because in a lot of my retreats, I've been getting a lot of people in their early 20s lately, uh, in their teens, interested. Now I know that they're not going to live a life of not eating. They still live in a life where they're enjoying friends, going to college. But what they are picking up is, wow, food consciousness. Mm -hmm. And they are actually in their 20s noticing Man, I was feeling bad, feeling a certain way, and I thought I had to feel like this. When I started teaching them energy work, that you don't have to feel like this, that you can uh, actually dictate what goes into your system, that freed them up into a whole nother life differently than the generation before us have. This is the power of breatharianism. And then when they're ready in their life, after they go through marriages, have children, you don't want to just be sitting there not eating with your family. That's like a sacred thing. But if you got the right foods on the table, that's awesome. You understand? Your children, as they're growing up, they're never going to forget those moments. But still keep some type of what? Food consciousness within the family. Yes, y'all should fast together. There should be time periods where you don't eat. You understand? But then in your time, in your spiritual growth, once the kids got grown, you don't have to deal with that. Once your wife uh, or your spouse into what they're doing and y'all been together for a while, or even if you're divorced or broke up, okay? You might, instead of going into another relationship, you could say, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go into this other experience. That exists. That's the whole thing we're doing. We're making it, you know that it exists. Where you can uh, cultivate your energy, take it to another level altogether because the energy rise by its nature. That's the thing about us. We've been holding down our ascension through a lifestyle, through fear through guilt, all these other emotions. And the last thing you didn't know, your mind is so powerful that if it don't want to do something or feel an energy, it can block it out. But once it knows something exists and you really want to with your willpower, your willpower is the strongest thing that you have access to. And you can utilize that and grow into your spiritual growth. And it's a wonderful thing. That's amazing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're saying that if you change what you know about life and about yourself, mm -hmm. it changes the physical way that you live. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Changes your reality. So there is truth when they say what you think you're creating your reality. There's truth to that altogether. So what's the difference between understanding it's um, you cannot eat and be full of energy mm -hmm. and actually live like this? Oh. Because it's not easy. Right. There's a, a big gap. Exactly. Between understanding it and to actually live it. 
Exactly. So, so first you got this knowledge, okay? And this is what I'm teaching right now, at least broadcasting it. Boom, it exists, it exists. Before, there was people who never heard it. And usually when you never heard it, there is a resistance. Wait a minute, who are you? <laughs> You're not the medical doctor or the, you know, who is you? Boom. How can I trust you? Right, right. Say? And then again, no, you have to eat or you die. That's the program that's going to humanity. And it's understandable. So me being a teacher or other people who's going through this or who knows it, you don't have to get frustrated. You just understand the situation we're all in. So, of course, knowledge is one thing you didn't know. Now, the next phase is when you get knowledge. This new learning is coming into being. You start accepting it or try to learn as much as you can about it. That's what I tell people. Just don't blindly believe and follow. Learn some things. Learn the do's and don'ts. And try it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, wisdom is the application of the knowledge. That brings forth wisdom. It's one thing just to talk it and sit in your head as theoretical knowledge, but when you start applying it, that principle, that's where you start seeing the power that comes from it. It's sort of like when I started fasting once a week, and I couldn't wait till it was over with. Now, my mind used to play all tricks. Why are you doing this? Is this really spiritual? What are you doing? But then over a period of time where I can do a fast easy, it was easy, it was in my lifestyle. I even found myself one time mowing the yard without eating or drinking, carrying out my whole day like it was nothing. And I didn't even know about breatharian. My body got used to that new habit within its lifestyle. And that's what we could do. We always train in our bodies uh, for what we want to do. Even down to a person smoking a cigarette. Now, I'm not judging it like that. But they have trained their body to take on that new habit. It knows how to handle it so it won't kill them right away. Mm -hmm. And it does the best you can. That's the thing about our bodies. It does the best we can to carry out the program that we want, to carry out your dream, whatever it is, whether it's good or bad. But it also pays attention to universal forces. It's sort of like where there's a season change. Don't you notice everybody start blowing their nose, catching the cold, catching the flu, all this mucus start coming up, and they're blaming a, a bug in the air. Mm -hmm. But it's basically the atmosphere is changing. You're going into a new season. Your body is so in tune with the atmosphere, even when you're unconscious, it's going to make that shift too. So it's getting rid of everything so it can make that shift smoothly to keep you alive. It's always working to keep us alive. It's our friend. So when you're dealing with ego, ego is not evil at all. It's going for pleasure, enjoyment, because it understands it's living in a pleasure-enjoyment world. <laughs> so you're just retraining the ego that, okay, those things are hurt us. We're going for another pleasure. You're still going to have great pleasure. A whole other life open up to you, especially when you're healthy and you can touch your feet again and move your hands and all this other stuff. I mean, of course. And the power of your mind gets so strong because keep in mind where you were eating all those heavy foods or eating, period, it takes a lot of energy to digest that. Mm -hmm. When you're, all of that energy is not in your abdomen and been no more, it rises to the head. So it strengthens your thinking, your cognitive thinking. And it even brings things to you. You find it out that you'll start drawing things to you magnetically without you putting least effort or none into it at all. This is how powerful beings we are. That's amazing. So this opens up everything. Now, so the, the question, um, if you talked about the ego, so mm -hmm. I'll be the ego for a second. Right. What's up for me? Why do you <laughs> like, like, seriously, why don't you want to eat? Eating is one of the best pleasure uh, thing in the world. Exactly. Why, why should I stop it? I understand eating uh, less, okay, but, but why won't you want to eat? Right. Now, that's a good question because your ego, which is our physical bodies, hands down, everybody's egotistical. <laughs> and your ego is going to ask you the question, what is this for me? What is the pleasure in it? Even the head might catch the knowledge. That's what happens to people. And they'll jump into something that they never completed because the ego start asking them questions. Is this worth it? Why do we have to do that? So you got to start giving your ego and training it and giving it some good answers it can understand. It's like a child. It wants to know. See, your body makes a good servant but a bad master. That's the way it is. 
and you want to get back in the driver's seat to really help your body, not beat it up and say, you're going to do this. That's not going to work because it's going to rebel. Y'all going to have to work together as a team now. Now, I know I'm talking like in a second person, like it's this other entity, but in the beginning stages, it is. It's been programmed and it's carrying out the cycle. It's not its fault. So, would you, uh, sorry, would you say the first step is understanding that you are not your body? Right. You're, you're not your body. And your body is your servant. It's your servant. It's a vehicle you're using. However, it has so much, but it's not to be put down even though we say that. Because this is the place you are viewing the whole universe. So it has great importance. There was a time we took this out of spirituality also by saying that. No, your body, you want to put it back into the, into spirituality. See, the thing about breatharianism, it puts you back into your body. Wow. How, okay, how? Like, um, a lot of people um, say, ground yourself, eat something. Come back to your body, you're so high right now, eat something after you're so high. So how breatharian is coming back to your body? Well, because when a person is getting sick and feel aches and pains all over your body, that means that you're getting kicked out. The, the life force is blocked. There's blockages. You, as a being who's using this as a, as a vehicle, is slowly getting moved out. If you continue that process or that lifestyle, it's going to form into a disease. It's going to get worse. You're getting kicked out even more. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, death is coming in. You got evicted. And that's because... Energy blockages. Main thing. The energy blockages in the body and they start manifesting because your body is energy also. Keep in mind everything is energy and all physical matter has an electromagnetic field. That's just, if we even got computers and technology now where we can see this field within us. And everything you put into your body, every thought you have, the clothes you put in your body, on your body uh, affects the energy field. Even a synergy, how me and you are sitting next to each other, we are picking up each other's energy. We do it everywhere we go. This is really taking place. So even by, uh, like how we say, this puts you back into your body. You were getting kicked out before, but now you're reversing it and saying, wait, when you start getting healthy, remember I said a healthy body is a sexual body? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the blood is flowing, it's circulating. That helps with an erection, in other words. But we're not talking in an ugly way that you go have sex. We're saying that feels back alive. You can feel your feet and stuff again. You're getting back in. Now, what you were saying that a person needs to ground themselves by eating things at times, I understand what you're talking about. That's a person who's, uh, how should I say, there is certain things where your energy could be going really fast that you can't really keep up and you're feeling uncomfortable. Yes, eat some. That's why I'm saying take breath breatharianism slow to where you can handle each pace, each phase, as the energy start rising. In other words, you can go too fast. And that's why people, a lot of people, oh, this always happens, lose a lot of weight. They're basically fasting, starving. And that's not the way to do it either. The body program, if you, like the ATP and the, the, the cells of the body, they feed off of ATP, which is a high energy that comes from the atmosphere. We feed off the sun cycles that brings more of a, a heated solar energy into the body. The lunar cycles. Everything is affecting us. And to show you how close we are with nature, let's just take our pineal gland, for instance, in our head, which they call the third eye. When the sun is out in the daytime, it actually secretes serotonin throughout the blood. It didn't ask your permission to say, I'm about to do this now. It does it on its own because the sun activated it. When the moon come out, no matter what cycle is in, the same gland is automatically going to do, put serotonin, melatonin throughout the blood. And that helps to regenerate you and get you back strong again so when you wake up in the morning from a good night's sleep. <coughs> so everything is helping you. You are connected. We all connected to the nature. All connected to it. So breatharianism isn't about eating or not eating. You're reconnecting yourself back with the cycles of nature because we've been far off. Why? Because of our ambitions. Too much working. Okay, so, Eating so, wrong f oh, go ahead. So people will, will say, wait a second, do you say our nature is not eating? You, we have so many uh, or, organs inside of us. Mm -hmm. 
that are uh, supposed to, all their job is to digest and to, so, oh. is, isn't our nature is to eat? Well, what makes us different than other animals, our whole body shows up in nature. Sort of like my shoulder, how it connects uh, to my arm. The back got the same thing, the dolphin. In other words, any, every part in our body, we can see out of nature where it shows up at. But there's one thing we cannot see, and that's our consciousness. There's other things. We got our thumb, of course, that makes us different than other animals that helps out. And also our speech. We make the more uh, sounds than other animals, because that's what basically what uh, language is, sounds. So our communication is very important. <laughs> it's making us human. Very important. It's so important that even the left side of our brain is bigger, more, more so than the right side because it has a language center there. <laughs> Very important. So that's a great thing, learning this language. And dealing with language, I like to bring this up. Dealing with breatharianism, you're learning the language of nature again. Remember I said you're learning more about your biology or what is doing with the natural forces. And you you're not talking about the biology of your body, mm -hmm. but about the consciousness. The biology. consciousness, right. right, exactly. So you're coming back to, to the consciousness in the universe uh, nature, mm -hmm. and not what we thought is our nature, and that's our body. Exactly, right. that's our resurrection. So yes, on one level, you do have a intestines and stuff like that. You might say, well, that's for eating food. Well, of course, being a breath in, you still can swallow bugs riding a motorcycle, okay? So it's going to get rid of things. Uh, being in a polluted city when the air is fogged up, your skin is actually an organ. It will pick up all of that. It will affect your organ even if you're eating or not eating. So your body is still going to be working at a level getting rid of things. You follow me? So yes, your di digestive system is still going to be working. But not at the level you're using it at right now. You understand? Yeah. Now there's energy going to start flowing up through uh, um, your intestines, flowing through the heart, the blood circulation. All of this start coming alive. And when it is up and functioning at 100%, you will see for yourself that, wow, this is amazing. Even though I'm probably not, eat, not eating all together, you know, like some people, I'm on a trail where I know I'm feeling better than I ever have in my life, and I've already broke the standard that was society was given what it says health's supposed to be. So, we already done that. <laughs> so now, if you continue on this path, of course, it's a natural byproduct. It's not a force. It's a natural allowing that would take place. And that's what you'll know in your own. This is why this is a part of a spiritual journey. You'll know when to let go altogether. Because it'll feel comfortable. Okay. Let's see if someone have any um, questions for you. <laughs> I saw some people say something. Um, so, Odelia says that we will put a link to all the events that... Um, uh, that you're okay so in the end of the of the interview we'll put a, a link to all the events lectures and retreats that um, that uh, you're gonna uh, do here in Israel right soon um, there's a question here um, from Yael what do you recommend to do about emotional eating oh, emotional eating that is a good one where again you deal with your ego again it could be relationships could trigger it. Stress at jobs could trigger it. I understand how that season can be. Now, what you want to do about emotional eating is start, instead of just eating and eating anything, think in your mind on things that you really enjoy, you understand? But the things you don't enjoy, just don't eat it just to be eaten out of emotions. If you're going to eat like they say, eat the things you really enjoy, that starts soothing the emotional body. I'm going to tell you a story, and I say this a lot. There was a time when I made my transition. One thing I loved was the Frito corn chips that you eat, and also the avocados. Loved them. Now, instead of fighting against that, that's still in me that I love them. So what's going to happen is, as soon as I see them on sale or anything else, that's going to trigger me wanting to go get them. I got to go get it. You're feeling bad about yourself. I broke. 
You shouldn't feel like that. If I know I love those particular foods, I'm going to enjoy myself with them. And I did. So everything else, the spiritual walk was doing real good, but I enjoyed those things that I really enjoyed. Over a period of time, they didn't taste the same no more. So right there, I knew that my body was telling me, and they didn't feel the same no more in my being. So therefore, my body was telling me, now we can move on. It's like, being, see, a food, you're making relationships with them. It is. It's a serious relationship. So to just break away from a relationship, have you ever been in one where y'all just didn't say those last words yet? you got to talk one more time and make sure it's over. It's one of those things. It's a serious breakup. So when you're breaking up from that, that's why you're not trying to snatch yourself away. You're easing yourself up out of that. Making sure everything, every base is covered. So again, your body is so intelligent, it does have a body intelligence. But in the meantime, make sure you keep staying on the energy cycle of meditation. Meditation is a good foundation because by us having an electrical body, living in an electrical universe, as we see in the day, just relaxing, you can feel the energy flow coming up and down the body. So even during the retreats, we're going to focus a lot on Qigong so you can understand this. And this energy is everywhere. I'm hearing Israel is high. When I was in Egypt, it was high. When I was in the Canary Islands going through Europe, when I was in America, it's everywhere. You're living in a magnetic field of the sun. So it's time for us to wake up to see what we got as our tools and our equipment and what we're living in. This is a great age we're in, and guess what? This is free energy. Okay, so, so you're saying, uh, I'll, I'll go back uh, to two things. First of all, the Qigong we did um, today in, at the beach, we did it yesterday, and yeah. today, which was amazing, just not doing anything, um, and meditate in, in certain, um, how do you call it? Uh, the position. positions. Mm -hmm. um, and the energy is uh, flowing. Right. And, and something is, is different, like the state of mind is different, the, the physical... Um, um, the physical state is, is different right um, so that's that's amazing and you recommend if someone is having like emotional uh, drive to eat right to meditate at the, this moment not so much at that moment keep that in your lifestyle every day okay so you're not saying like um, something uh, you're saying the more you do um, meditate, Qigong, and energy work, mm -hmm. you have less um, emotional eating. Exactly. And when you have emotional eating, eat what you love. Right. Okay, that's nice. This is like user friendly. Nice. Don't fight it. You this have isn't emotional a fight. eating. Eat consciously right. what you love. What you love. But make sure you keep that meditation in your life. And like I said. What makes this age different than everything else? Yes, meditation been around a long time. Qi gongs, Tai Chi, yogas. But now we know you could go without eating. Before we know, this has been on the scene. Now it's here. Okay. You have a goal people, while you're doing it. People talk about it on the on the Bible and that Jesus <laughs> didn't eat and Moses right. didn't eat. Right. Oh, but they're, the they're not Buddha, me. The, the, right. Yeah, they're over here. I can't the, touch it. But they're telling you to take up your own cross, in other words. In other words, this is the temple. Yeah. <laughs> and Jesus by himself said, like, <laughs> you are me. I'm like you. Exactly. No difference. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this time, you, there are people that are saying, I'm not eating and it's okay. Exactly. And what you're saying, you told it to, to me before, vegetarian is not not eating. That's not the issue. That's not the not issue. Not issue and for sure not fasting. Right. It's a way of life to know uh, your energy and the mm -hmm. universe law and how to move energy inside right. of you. That's and work right. your energy to the highest potential. Every day, work your energy to its highest potential because that feeds and brings more light to the body. Not eating is a byproduct of you living that way. Amazing. And that's talking about also the emotional eating. When mm -hmm. you live your life as a vegetarian, and meditate and do energy work, you won't want to eat. Um, exactly. It all goes hand in hand because the physical body, emotional body, and mental body is basically all one body. So when you work on one, it affects the other and vice versa. Amazing. And keep that going. So you talked about um, living your life in a high, uh, the highest um, 
energy that you can. Right. So in my experience, and I know from a lot of um, um, uh, light workers and, and, and spiritual um, um, people that go in the spiritual way, the pranic way, the vegetarian. When I was like feeling, oh my God, I, I'm so high of, of my energy. I just, sometimes I didn't know what to do with it. So right. I, I, I uh, w watch TV or I go to eat or do everything uh, to, to put my, my, <laughs> my, 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 um, my energy down. Right. So what do you recommend to do when you go in a vegetarian way or when you go in your spiritual way, mm -hmm. consciousness way, and you are in your high energy? state of mind so what 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 do you recommend to do oh well see stay with it. that's answering the same questions i'm doing again if you're in a state of mind like that and you feel you need to like you say watch tv or um eat something if that's what you're led to do that's where you're at but by you keeping meditation in your life like let's go back what i'm saying constantly you're constantly going to keep getting back into that state see it's not just not a one-time thing no more you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Before you described it as this one time thing that came, and then you dumb down the energy all the way, we ain't going to do that no more. If you put something into your body, stay into your meditation because your body going to keep striving to go back to that state. Just take it slow. Does it, does it enough or you need places in your life to put this energy out? Like you talked about sexual energy. Mm -hmm. That's the same energy, right? Mm -hmm. The life energy, prana energy, the chi. So you have a lot of energy, you mm -hmm. meditate, um, you eat well or don't eat. What do you do with life? Right? Well, that's one of the questions oh. you asked me before. What do you want to do with this energy? What do you so, want to do? So, First of all, you got more time on your hands. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. You're going to have more energy once you get to a certain level. Not at the beginning. People call me on the beginning stages. Every time I didn't eat in four days, where's the energy at? Okay, you got... You got to heal first before your body's going to start sustaining itself. I do want to say that. You're going to go through a healing process on many levels. Once the body gets to a certain level of healing, then it start um, bringing in more energy, and that's where you feel that influx of energy. Now, listen at this. So the weakness, I'm sorry if you, if you open it. So the weakness that people feel at the first time they, they're fasting, mm -hmm. It's toxic. It's, it's toxic and it's, it's healing. It's healing itself. Because so. believe me, our lifestyles are what we've been doing. You've been doing it all your life. You're a master at eating. You're fighting against a live master. <laughs> and you program to, to eat more and <laughs> right. to survive. And a, it's not easy. And the mind is very tricky too. It'll trick you back into eating. Come on, you know. So that's why you got to negotiate with your own ego, your own self. That's what you're dealing with. <laughs> Your this is why your own program to change and go over to another program. And just like when you download the program in your computer or anything, that's a process. And the bigger the program, the longer it takes. Some programs, oh, that took a few seconds. Some applications, especially back in the day, depending on your computer or where it's at, it might take days, weeks. <laughs> okay, but this is awesome. This is a fun life to live. But what we're saying is, too, on that subject, when your energy start getting very high, you're saying how to use it, you got more time on your hands, because believe me, it took a lot of time cooking food, looking for places to eat, this and that and the other. Now you got all this time, you can start doing things you never thought you could do before. Like I started playing different uh, music, and uh, start writing books. Start uh, learning things I thought I was never going to learn, new languages and all of this other stuff. There's a whole corridor you can open up. You can already uh, use that energy to better your life on how it already is. Become a better person. Work on your character. Help the world more. There's so much stuff you can do. So that's important um, for people to, for a person to go in a vegetarian uh, way mm -hmm. to question himself how my life is working right now what do i want to do right with more time and more energy because if you have more time without eating and mm -hmm. the emotional uh, issue you're healing yourself right so 
what am I gonna do? It's gonna <laughs> <laughs> where's all the drama? And then this gets scary too when we talk about longevity and stuff. Now, if your life is sucking right now, you don't like this message. What I want to live longer for <laughs> in this situation. So this is like a wake up call too. No matter what level you're on, and if I'm creating this reality, I gotta make some changes. This is how far breatharianism goes. Like we said, it's more than just eating or not eating. You are taking up a new consciousness that everybody has access to to redirect the energies in your life on how they're flowing so it can be more light to you and you can bring more life in the atmosphere around you. So th that's a big issue. That's a big issue. So you can bring more life, mm -hmm. more light um, Absolutely. to people around you. So how do you want to do it? <laughs> Let's see if another question is over here. Um, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> um, okay, so we don't have here any more questions. Um, there's uh, a question that uh, bothered me, and I know a lot of um, um, people that go in the pranic or uh, vegetarian way. Um, what you recommend to do? Like, I'm um, um, not eating for a day, for a two, and I'm losing weight. And I know my program, and mm -hmm. it's not easy. I'm in this process for three years, and I know a lot of people that are in this process. I'm afraid of losing weight. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of like being small, and I know it, it happened again and again, and I know it's in my program, and I know it's something I can change, but it's difficult. Mm -hmm. like, how can I not lose weight and still not eating. Now here's the deal when I'm talking about that time and what it takes. When I left meat salon and became a vegan, I lost a lot of weight just by doing that change. Now, the people I was around in my world every day was looking at me saying, you're sick, something wrong, because they was used to seeing a heavier figure. And I'm saying, well, no, I feel better. But when I got to the vegan community, I fit straight in because there was other people who looked just like me. <laughs> and they didn't know you from the past. They didn't know me from the so past. They, they know, okay, you are a thin person. Right. And even today, when I go around that same frequency, everybody's still big and, you know, that I grew up with. But now they at least, at least the doctor's office today is now saying, okay, you need to lose some weight. <laughs> Change your diet, what you're eating. So everybody got the memo now, okay? So now when they see me, they can say, okay, he's doing some good stuff. <laughs> There's no more fighting. The attack is over, but yet still, they're still in their chemistry. So, you're on that level. Then when I started eating live and raw foods, I went through another shift of losing weight. But then when I got into breatharianism, there was a time even me, a whole lot of weight seemed like it began to get lost. And even some woman, you know, somebody will scare you saying, man, you're looking too thin. So it scares you. Boom. Yeah. So you go back. Boom. Okay, let me, t let me back up this a little. Now, this is when I'm saying this is why this is so important. Taking your time. Keeping your meditations. You might even have to get deeper with them. You know, twice a day or whatever. I went into the microcosmic orbit. But I still kept that track. Um... Say, for instance, even a breath in is at the level when you start eating once every three days, once every seven days. That's still considered a breath in. You're just letting go slightly. See, we're into this thing. We want to go all the way, right away, and well, think that's what it's like. But keep in mind, eating once every three days is oppressive. Eating once a week is oppressive. We, we just want to throw that out the window now. <laughs> but that, why would a person do that? It's sort of like what I tell my journey. Uh, I was in a, a situation where I had my son with me every other weekend. So that was the time I decided to eat being a breath in when he was around me. We had a good time. We had a good weekend. When he leave, I know I could go back into my not eating state. So that's the power of a breath in. Now, does that mean I wasn't a breath in? Of course you are. Now, there's many different levels of degrees, but people are getting too... How shall I say? Not understanding what it is. Now, going on that level where you're losing too much weight, if you find yourself losing too much weight, 
your body is not energetically uh, ready yet. Now, that don't mean you quit altogether and go back to eating and gave up. You stop at the weight that you're comfortable and keep that lifestyle until that energy gets settled into that new lifestyle. It's sort of like the video we just gave. There's a transformation and a transmutation. The transformation is physical. That physical change is taking place. And then the transmutation is when, oh, a period of time when you stayed in that change, your body got comfortable with it. Oh, this is where you want me to stay at. Then it will stay and maintain that. Now, if you want to let something else go, go slowly. See, even dealing with a fast, I'm telling you, people, you really got to be critical how you tell them each step. <laughs> Say, for instance, you want to start fasting. Do you know if you were to take seven days of fasting just by not eating no salt at all, you would see physical changes big time on your body? Or not eating no sugars? You could eat everything else, just don't eat the sugars. You would see physical changes. Or it could be that you're drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes, smoking too much weed. I'm going to stop this for a week and see what changes. Your body still took that as a fast. It knows when you let a habit go, even slightly. So start easing off slowly as you start changing yourself. You are an artist of your life. You are an artist of your physical body. You don't need to rush the pain. So if, if you're um, uh, coming to a retreat mm -hmm. of a few days, right. and you see that you're losing a lot of weight, mm -hmm. what should you do? Stop the process or finish it and, and go back to another lifestyle? Oh, wow. Well, that's why we have, and there's, there's processes where I have, where I see a person say, well, you need to go get something to drink. Now, that don't mean they stop the process. See, you see how your mind went? That stopped the breath during yeah. process. It didn't. Or stop it or not. That didn't. Mm. You're doing a whole lot better than what you was doing before you came here. You're always in the process. When you get up in the morning to use the bathroom, you're in the breath during process. See, see how we need to change these old concepts? Oh, as soon as I put something in my body, I stopped the process. No, you didn't. You're doing, especially if you're doing a whole lot better than what you was doing before. When you come in in a breath in retreat, uh, for real, you're not going to be eating uh, something that's real thick. You follow me. You're doing a whole lot better than when you came. One time I even uh, had some tea for some people and some girls like, Oh, I don't drink that type of tea. You know, everybody want to show off like where they at spiritually. But I'm looking at her physical body. There's no way in the world <laughs> before you got here, that tea ain't going to hurt you for what you've been doing to your body. I'm looking at you. Your stomach's out here. You're not, you know, I'm not trying to put them down. You're doing a whole lot better going through a breatharian process, at least going for it, being in that energy. You didn't stop the process. You're just doing what's best for you at that time. Did that make sense? Yeah. So you're saying, if I'm understanding right, first of all, before you go to the process, mm -hmm. start living a life when you're slowly, slowly living as a breatharian. Uh, one day of fasting and leave sugar for a week and leave uh, one meal for a week. Well, that'll help so out. That, that, first of all, that help yourself to adjust. I'm going to tell you something that's even get even deeper because we could go all day long about your method you're going to use because basically you're going to be the one to make your own plan yeah usually about the third or fourth day of a retreat i look at everybody and say how do you feel but, uh, well i feel pretty good energy is different do you feel you could go without eating right now well yeah everybody feels it and you can but it's the consciousness you're under and the main battle is when you go back out of society all these triggers that's why they put food in the same category as a drug. As soon as these triggers are around, okay, you're going to have a new mental battle. That's the real obstacle course right there. But right at that moment, when I ask them that question, everybody feels it because the body's doing what it's supposed to do. It got a new program. It's just it has to go through a new series of challenges. And that's, I think, what people are scared of. But you shouldn't be. The universe is user-friendly. Just get out here. Don't give up. It's, it ain't that the knowledge don't work. You understand? It ain't nothing that's wrong with your physical body. It's just how you apply it, take your time with love, and just stay into the process. And the main thing is to be healthy. Amazing.
And this is a byproduct of all of that. You will drop eating all together. It'll just be that day where you don't feel like going through that conscious eating no more. Okay, I, I know that this is going to go through me eventually. I know I'm just eating it out of boredom habit. But I don't like this feeling. I like feeling this other way. So you just leave it alone. That's nice. So what's, what, what is um, making people losing weight? Going too fast. Going too fast. And the program ain't in you yet. That shows it right there. You don't have a program. And which program? The program of uh, the breatharian program that you can be sustained without eating. That other program, like, for instance, a lot of people say, oh, no, I do believe it. But yet and still, I knew a person who was, uh, they're going into the breath air process, but their business is also uh, selling health foods, what's healthy for the body. That program is in them deep. I even had a friend one time who told me the truth. She was a physical therapist working in the hospital, so you learn certain things that she said, I can actually see that my education is blocking a lot of this new knowledge I'm trying to bring in. So yeah, usually nutritionists have a harder time than somebody who's ignorant coming into this knowledge. Because somebody asked me, what about my vitamins? What about minerals? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Where did your body get that from? I don't know what it is. Nobody gave me that program. Maybe that's what made it easy. The ignorance. Okay, but nobody tell me. Nobody said like in in uh, um, you have to eat uh, three meals a day and and. Well, growing up on that level, yeah, yeah there was even a man in my neighborhood who ate one meal a day back then, and we thought that was weird. He ate one meal a day, man. I wonder he's so little. Of course, he outlived everybody, you know, in that age group and so forth. But now we understand. But go ahead with that program, eating three meals a day. Yeah, well, that's a program. Kind yeah, of eating three meals a day, or you need to eat green leaves for this, and you need to, to eat fruit for this, and you need to eat fat for this, and after you work out, you need, um, uh, how do you say, um, how do you say it in English? Uh, you need, well, that's all you these need words. Something after, after you hear those words, but you really don't know what they mean. I mean, an average person. So you say it's because we believe it's true. Right. We you see it, it on TV. You learned about a new word. Oh, gluten. Gluten-free. Then all of a sudden you jump on the back. <laughs> all right. If we're playing this cycle over and over again. And before you were just doing just fine. So how do you reprogram yourself? It's not easy. It is not, it is not easy. I'm saying that as a person that did a 10 days process and living and searching in this life lifestyle. So... I'm going to tell you why it's easy. It's not easy, but it's easy. Okay. Okay, you in the music, you play the guitar. What did it take to play that guitar? Of course, when you first picked it up, all right. P practice and... Practice make perfect. Yeah. That's it. So practice... And even act, it's even the same way with bringing the habit of not eating at all. It's just like any other practice. Not eating and believing you're healthy. Right. Because belief, that's just making it into another religion. No, it takes practice. That's why I'm saying uh, I was already in the cycle of meditating. Working with energy. It's all about energy. You need to replace this energy if you're losing it through eating. Do that make sense? Yeah. So meditation is a must. I get these people who don't want to, oh, show me the best meditation. Do you think you're going to become a breatharian tomorrow? No. It don't take long either, but it takes the dedication just like you're learning something in the physical. Like being ready right. for this. You're preparing this, this instrument. This is an instrument. Mm -hmm. This is physical. You can feel it. You're working with it now. What makes it different than external instruments is that you're living in it, so you're looking at it totally differently. But look at it just like your guitar. Now you can play it with your eyes closed. That's how you want to work with your body. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Um, <laughs> how much meditate? You, you recommend um, a day? Well, for the average person, at least once a day. Have and that in for, your... For and that. as I say, a lifestyle, it's not about forcing it again. A lifestyle meaning you have rearranged your life to where that's a part of it. It's sort of like when I told you I was fasting once a week for the Sabbath. No matter what was going on, this is part of my life. Friends call me, hey, 
we got to get together a party coming over here. Well, I can't come tonight. I'll come after the Sabbath. You have put that in your life to say, I'll come afterwards. Mm -hmm. So it's the same way with these other things. You make it a priority in your life where everything will come afterwards. You're still having a life. First of all, you meditate. Right. You put this in and find the best time, the best time where you got more energy and set that in your lifestyle. If you got to wake up earlier before you go to work, set that in your lifestyle. It doesn't matter. To become second nature. It doesn't matter what kind of meditation and for how long, like five minutes of, of mindfulness is enough or you have to do like 20 minutes or certain well, meditation. Here we go on this. When you enjoy doing something, you would do it a lot longer. Find a meditation that fits you that you enjoy. Don't get nothing too complicated. I don't care how powerful they say it is. If you've got to do a lot of work with it, you ain't got the time for it in your schedule, you're not going to stick with it. Get something you enjoy. Dealing with time again. That deals with your schedule in life and things like that. And set your life up to try to be like a retreat. When I was living in America, I lived in an urban area, busy neighborhood. You can hear the cars outside. But as soon as you come through my door or where I live, I made sure to make it comfortable for my energy. Uh, one day a week, I even had a bubble bath for myself. You know, lighting the candles. This was my retreat. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to go nowhere. This was my life. My retreat was comfortable. Find your way to do meditate that you love mm -hmm. for how long as you, might, that you love. And the more you do it and you love to do it, mm -hmm. the more you will be capable of sustain this energy right. and be more right uh, and even living my lifestyle there was times uh a weekend is coming up and i say you know what i'm going to get away and it just be me i'm going on my own personal retreat i'll go out into nature somewhere get away from the urban community that's my retreat where i could go meditate lay out with the negative ions of nature this what type of mindset you got to bring on if you think you're going to bring this life on on a chaotic lifestyle like, I'll even see, no offense, you know, woman with the baby on her. I want to become a breath in. Okay, it's two years old. It's running everywhere. You got that baby on your mind. You're not focused enough. You got time. You understand? Raise your children. Be there. Don't try to make them a breath in. <laughs> you know, you see people do this. You really got to talk some common sense. This is user-friendly knowledge. All it is is you're working with something. We know that it exists as nature. You know you exist. And I guarantee you, every time you go into nature, you'll feel better. That should tell you something right there. Start working with it. You'll get healthier. Cool. This isn't far-fetched. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we have anything um, before we're uh, finishing. Anyone have any uh, questions? No. 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 All right. Okay. So, um... We gonna uh, you're gonna do a few lectures and retreats in Israel in this past three in the, this uh, yeah the next coming weeks. weeks yes next three weeks lectures uh, different retreats and we're gonna do a lot of hands on energy work it's more than just talking we're gonna work with these energies even in the lecture even in the even lectures in the lecture. so absolutely th tomorrow there's a lecture in Pardeshana and um, uh, I think Odelia gonna write put the event. They have all the um, the events. Um, it's really recommended. <laughs> Seriously, this guy is amazing. Um, um, and tomorrow we'll be starting our Tai Chi. Tomorrow we start Tai Chi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. So thank you so much. Uh, I really recommend to 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 go on his website, the YouTube, and uh, come to the lecture and the retreat. They're gonna be three days lecture in the Yarden, and eight days also in the Yarden. It's gonna be with water, right? Yes. It's it's water retreat. Yes. Um, if you want to, if you want to go straight dry fasting, that's recommended also. But like we say, don't overdo it. Just take your time. But the synergy and the knowledge we're going to be teaching and the energy work we're going to be working with is going to be top notch. <laughs> so before we finish, any uh, tip for a person to say, okay, this is really nice. I don't know if I'm ready for a retreat, mm -hmm. but I want to start something. So what, what do you recommend? Oh, well, absolutely. The two things I recommend is at least fasting once a week. Due to your schedule, where you can put it in, we understand people's life schedules. 
to get your body used to that new habit. Over time, it will become easier or will become second nature. <laughs> and then number two, try to get you a meditative lifestyle. Those are two things you should work on. And also, you know, lighten up on the food, be food conscious, keep that in mind. And then when you're ready, there'll be something in you spiritually or energetically because us being energetic beings and we grow by our nature, when we as a babies in the physical, now we're adults, energetically there's something in us that want more answers, wants to grow. So that will come out sooner or later and then that's when you'll know it's time to continue for it. Very nice. <laughs> can people uh, who eat meat can go... Uh, oh, absolutely. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This ain't got nothing to do with what diet you're on, what religion, what belief system, nothing like that. Uh, ethnic group, race, we are all living in this great uh, atmosphere that su supports and sustains life. <laughs> great. Thank you so much. All right. I'm Thank you. It. Awesome. Bye, Kavalim.